Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap. We're going to start with Bitcoin number one, followed by Ethereum, Solana, BNB, XRP, Dogecoin, and then we're ending with Cardano at number 10. Let's get straight into it, boys and girls. So for BDC against USD, ladies and gentlemen, we are very close to our target at 96,000, which we acquired way back in October. But uh, anyway, we're breaking up and we're expecting 96,000 to be hit. We'll probably go past it a little bit. I can't tell you exactly how much, but a little bit. We might even cross 100. Again, uh, you can say for sure. But the point is, 96,000 is our target. The best thing for all season is for BDC to not touch his target. The moment BDC touches his target, uh, it could spell a reversal. Right? Again, again, the reason why I would say that is because there's absolutely zero, 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 zero support over here. So if and when BDC drops, it will be very, very fast. BDC will just cut through over here, right? From where is this? 86,000 down to 74,000. There's just nothing here. So yeah, the hope, the hope is BDC continues higher, right? But how much higher? Again, we have 96,000. If we were to go any higher past 96,000, more likely than not, there will be consolidation, which will be the best thing, to be honest, if we could you know, uh, form a bullish continuation chart pattern. But as it stands, eh, it doesn't look like there's any um, continuation chart pattern to trade from, but uh, we're very close to the target. And again, just a gentle reminder, BDC is ready. One, two, three, four. This is the fifth wave. This is the fifth wave. This is the end game uh, for BDC. So that's why, like I was saying, uh, the best thing that could happen for alts is BDC not to hit its target. So the longer BDC marks around and just goes sideways and up and down and not hit its target is the best thing for all the other alts. Uh, but as it stands, <laughs> we are on our way to 96,000. When will we hit it? I'm going to tell. Soon, I would say soon. F against BDC. So for Ethereum, we are... Okay, so that's like I was saying for Ethereum. Okay, let's move to daily. So for Ethereum, I'm anticipating A, very gigantic ABCDE. And then eventually, Ethereum flips Bitcoin, right? Uh, but that will probably be multiple years in the making. But uh, if this were to be an ABCDE, I suspect that we are very close to the bottom of the wave C, right? Uh, if I had to guess, right, again, pure guessing, uh, that where would I think the bottom of wave C is going to be? Uh, if I had to guess, I would say it's a clear of these lows here, right? I suspect the wheels will clear these lows for Ethereum. So, just a little bit more downside, in my opinion, for FBDC. Or another thing that you can do is um, we pull up the Fibonacci retracement, and this is what I would consider as the reversal zone, somewhere between 702 and 618. Somewhere here. So, yeah, if you have a BDC, consider swapping them into Ethereum because uh, I suspect that Ethereum should be doing. Fantastic eventually, right? When the time comes, 2028, I think. By 2030, I would say Ethereum should be hitting 10,000 or very close to 10,000. That's my take for Ethereum. So moving on to the USD pair, you will see that Ethereum is... Okay, let's go back to the daily. Ethereum is breaking back above the skinny pink line. It's, it's behaving very weirdly at the moment. Usually when you cross a skinny pink line, right, uh, we would expect a uh, bearish continuation. But in this case, if there is a strong rally back up above the skinny pink line, this means that there is also that possibility of Ethereum continuing higher. What would make this likelihood higher? Yeah, take out the highs here. Take out the highs here because this is a descending triangle. Mountain 1, Mountain 2, Mountain 3, we actually collapsed lower. We actually hit targets uh, and then we consolidated. <laughs> we reverse back up, so, eh, eh, bro, what's happening? Anyway, if you were to uh, hide the skinny pink line, right, this whole thing could turn into an inverse head and shoulders by itself. Left shoulder hit, right shoulder. That's the possibility. The best bullish case scenario for Ethereum is for it to turn into a inverse head and shoulders and then pump and continue higher to 9,000. So, yeah. But, but, but again, I still feel that eventually Ethereum will still drop back that's uh, the skinny pink line. Yeah, so my guess is that we'll still drop back to clear the lows over here. Right. Th that's my guess. That's something going to happen, but that's my guess. Uh, because we've already crossed the skinny pink line. So this is really a bearish sign. Sure, uh, there could be a strong rally right now, but 
I suspect something like this could happen. If you look at the F BTC pair, it's still bearish to me. So this means that F is still weak uh, in relation to BDC. Eventually, it'll be very, very, very strong. Uh, but as it stands, mm, no, it's still weak. So I would preach caution uh, about rushing to any trades for Ethereum at this point of time. I mean, if you're holding Ethereum, you don't have to sell if you don't want to. But I still feel that so we're going to fall back to clear these lows over here. So yeah, there you go. That's my take. Solana, Sol against BDC. Here we are for Solana. Solana is, again, on the skinny pink line. Um, I suspect that this could be a final rally back up, right? Uh, clearing all the clusters of buys here and here. Pum, pum, pum. And then we come back down. And this whole thing could be a big head and shoulders. Right. Whole thing could be a left shoulder. We get a head and a right shoulder. Pum. We collapse lower. So Sol, again, is also looking pretty weak in relation to BTC. I suspect that Sol may not, may not um, form a new all-time high against BTC. Uh, and there is significant resistance at this area. Sure, we may rally, but uh, I suspect that we will stop at around this area. So that's my take for Sol BDC, Sol USD. We are, yeah, we've hit targets. Do -do 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 -do. Um, where's this? Do -do -do -do. Uh, we were saying it will hit two two, and it's already hit two two. But again, if you look at a Sol BDC pair, and it's it's still weak in relation to BDC. But again, we've already hit targets. So there was a consolidation over here, right? Uh, although we touched the skinny pink line. Uh, this was a still a potential inverse head and shoulders, right? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Right, and eventually we hit 220. Now we are continuing higher. I suspect that we may see a new all time high for Sol USD. Probably not on Sol BDC, but very likely on Sol USD. So uh, a little bit more upside. But I suspect that we're already quite overbought, and eventually we will see a reversal. Not too far away, though. Again, even if you were to take any trades for Sol, we will have to wait for the Break of the highs first. Break the high, have a consolidation, then probably we take a trade up. Right? But you have to break the highs first. Right? Because there's a danger that suddenly, bam, there's a big sell. Right? Clear the highs first. We have to clear the highs first. So, yay, 2 2 oh, Let's go. BNB against BDC. Here we are for BNB. Okay, BNB feels like it's reversing back down, right? Under the skinny pink line. I suspect that BNB might go on a... um. Huge accumulation first uh, before reversing back up. So again, it's, it's weak against BDC. We were hoping for BNB to stay above the skinny pink line, but it's down. So you know the, your money will go much, much better being in BTC rather than being in BNB. But of course, you can also trade BNB as well. Uh, BNB, we have targets 1,002 and 1,005. Insane, right? From where we are right now. But I still anticipate that to be a possibility. Although, again, we've touched the skinny pink line. We are not going bananas. Uh, we have also formed a new all-time high with this zip back up. Uh, again, what's happening over here? We're not too sure. Could we be continuing higher? Sure, of course. But this is a very weak rally for BNB against USD. So, yeah, from a trading standpoint, there's just nothing much for BNB. Again, uh, way back in January, I did mention that uh, I was buying BNB at this area. 300 right could be bought some too as well but anyway here we are xrp okay so xrp is the um yeah the star crypto of the week so xrp had a super rally we're above the skinny pink line which is great but will we stay above it there were many times when xrp zip above the skinny pink line but it just came back down zip above just came back down so just to give a gentle reminder we are in a very very big bearish chart pattern for XRP against BTC, right? XRP is heading very likely towards the skinny pink line. But again, there is significant resistance over here. Just as, you know, when XRP was rising against BTC at around this area, there was significant resistance. But we couldn't break above it. We came back down. Now, there is significant resistance here as well. So I suspect that uh, this will just coincide with the skinny pink line. But how it coincided with the skinny pink line? Way back here. You see? So, yeah, I still suspect that there's still more meat in the move for XRP. We can still take a trade here for XRP BDC, right? Because, because, because XRP against USD, we still have targets towards the upside. Um, XRP against USD, we have a $1.60 target right now at one seventeen. This was a target which we acquired way back in August. So, we were anticipating XRP USD to complete an ABCDE. 
I know it's very weird, right? XRP BDC looks bearish, but XRP USD looks bullish. So we just call what we see. And yeah, but anyway, this is a wave E in my opinion. And it's really breaking out. So we have a final target here, $6.10 for XRP, six freaking dollars, which we also acquired way back in July. That was a super long time ago. And we are anticipating the continuation of the bullish run for XRP. It's already confirmed. So the best thing that you and I can do is to wait. I mean, if you're not in or if you know, anybody's not in, is to wait for a retrace. Let's just take uh, history as an example, right? XRP had a very huge, huge long accumulation over here. Um, it blasted off. When it rises, it just rises super insanely fast. Will there be opportunities for us to make an entry? Sure, over here. Look at this. You have to wait for this to appear first before taking any trades, right? When things are happening over here, sure, you can, you know, scalp in and out and in and out, scalp, 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 scalp. But um, the real true sizing only happens when there is a bullish continuation chart pattern. So again, um, going back to XRP at this point of time, uh, you suspect that once we hit 160, right? I suspect once we hit, okay, let's go back to the weekly. I suspect that once we hit 160, we will see some sort of a consolidation, right? Before the continuation towards $6. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. So yeah, this is where entries should be made at this level. Again, how long is this going to take? I don't know. I don't know. I need to see up here first, right? If this could be, I mean, this could be like ascending. This could be an inverse head and shoulders. This could be falling channel, boom, or this could be, again, all symmetrical as well, would be awesome. Uh, yeah, there's nothing much for us to work with at this point of time, so we have to be patient and we have to wait for uh, XRP to do its thing, right? So, yeah, but again, it's not just XRP, to be honest, there's also XLM, there's also going bananas, and XLM also has a gigantic squeeze that's breaking out. So, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about XLM once we come to XLM. Dogecoin, Dogecoin against BTC. So here we have a Dogecoin. Dogecoin is heading back up above the uh, resistance, right? We've broken the resistance, which is good. Uh, I suspect that we may consolidate here a little bit longer first, right? I suspect there could be consolidation first. So yeah, again, nothing much for us to work with for Dodge BDC. Uh, Dodge BDC could be in a very huge multi-year accumulation, right? We may not see new all-time highs for Dodge BDC, but it may just you know, muck around for a few years before going bananas. Uh, again, for a um, from a trading standpoint, just nothing much for Dodge PDC against USD. Dodge is yes going bananas, falling channel, but we touched the skinny pink line, so we were a bit cautious uh, about rushing to anything for Dodge USD. And it's really up. Will we get a new all-time high? Not too sure. We're not too sure. So as it stands, uh, yeah. Again, we <laughs> this this is not where you go long. This is not buying season. This is selling season, right? Buying season is actually here. This is selling. So yeah, do not be pulled into buying Dogecoin uh, at this level. If you want to, again, it's up to you. It's your money. It's definitely up to you. But you no, know, you have to wait for a continuation. Okay, let me just give you some examples. Uh, dog doggy coin was here, right? Accumulation, consolidation, and then what happened? Broke out. Small little consolidation. Consolidation broke out again. The boys and I actually took a trade over here, right? as well. We waited for the continuation to come in. And then it did come in. Bam! It went bananas. Right? There's also a lot of meat here. It went 1000% towards the upside. So as it stands for Dogecoin against USD, you will still have to wait for this to appear. Right? We have to take out these highs first. Poo! And after that, uh, we consolidate around the area. Right? It could be right on top. Right? It could be below. It could also be on it. It depends though, but the point is we'll have to wait for the break one, two, consolidation, and then we take the trade, right? So yeah, this right. This is what we want to trade. But we need confirmation first that there is continuation. So yeah, best thing that could happen for Dogecoin is um for BDC not to hit its target yet. For BDC to just muck around sideways and all. So that, that's the best thing for alts in general. So you have to monitor BDC as well, not just plainly on Dogecoin. Ada against BDC. What's up, Charles? Charles just announced that um, he's joining Trump's uh, council, crypto council. Okay. Anyway, for 
ADA against BDC. Uh, we are crossing a skinny incline. But is this is this sustainable? We don't know. Right. Uh, we also mentioned this many, 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 many times before that uh, ADA BDC has a huge, huge squeeze uh, potential. Right. Huge breakout uh, in the making. Potential, potential. No guarantees. No guarantees. Um, yeah. At what point will we consider this a possibility once we get a clear bullish reversal? At it, as it stands, there's just no clear bullish reversal yet, right? There is a strong rally, but will this strong rally result in a zip back down, right? Could we still be zipping back down? We don't know. So usually when a bearish trend ends, we go sideways for a while before going back up, right? Again, we are, I would love it if we could just go sideways for a while before going back up. So yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what happens for ADA against BDC. Ada against USD. Yes, we are back up above the skinny pink line. So we were saying that um, we were expecting bearish continuation towards the downside, but uh, eventually, bam, we rally back up. So this is the kind of feedback that you want to see if you are in the wrong strong rally that confirms uh, the, the reversal of the potential reversal of the trend. So we're just going to remove this. Uh, Ada against USD is okay. Let's just leave it here first. Ada against USD is above the skinny pink line. Uh, again, just like, you know, uh, what we've mentioned, we need to wait for the continuation. There has to be a bullish continuation chart pattern, right? So until it happens, mm, yeah, nothing much for us to work with. We, we still have to wait for the consolidation, right? Hopefully, hopefully, it's something that we can recognize, right? Hopefully, it's a clear bullish continuation chart pattern. And then we could take a trade higher for ADA. ADA might just... Uh, okay, there are many levels uh, for ADA to clear. This is the 123 level. Again, clusters of buys here. Uh, there's another level over here, uh, 240. And there's also another final level here. So again, uh, this bull season, which level are we going to clear? How many levels are we going to be clearing for ADA if things continue bullishly? Right. Again, we're not entirely sure. So let's just wait for the consolidation first uh, before, you know, jumping into a trade, right? Because I still suspect that we, sh we should be seeing a retrace for ev uh, eventually for ADA. You know why? Because we've already taken out the highs here. You see this? Um, so yeah, we might go a little bit higher, but I still suspect that there should be a retrace. And the retracement is where we make entries, right? So yeah, you don't make a move when things are rising. You make a move when things are correcting. All right, my singles, I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Ta-ta!